do Asian values uh, stand in for something else, for immigrant values, the values of, of immigrant Americans? Is there, I guess, overlap or synonymity with those things? Oh, also, how much of this do you think is a passing problem? I mean, as Asians become assimilated, those sort of values that you talk about become softer. Become softer? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the uh, extension of that question is, as Asians become more acculturated, as they sort of are mainstreamed in the culture, do those values start to sort of fade out or soften? Well, I, I think inevitably that happens with any group. And in, in reply to the earlier question, there's, there's significant overlap between uh, immigrant values and Asian values. It's just that these things are articulated and spoken of in different ways. And uh, there, there is a particularly, I think, Asian way of articulating these values. So, yeah. A, a lot of those values actually stem from Confucian philosophy, you know, all that harmonious living stuff that has very Asian philosophical roots. And uh, I, I actually think the, the way you pose that question is very interesting because you, you talk about it being a passing problem, you know, like the, the maybe possibly the overbearing values that we find ourselves under right now is a passing problem. But I actually would debate whether it's a problem at all, like, is obviously gonna, gonna fade. But maybe the fading is not a good thing. Maybe, maybe we should actually strive to perpetuate at least some of these values onto the next generation. Yeah, I, th I think it's a an, an particularly interesting point because there's a, an automatic comparison that comes up, obviously, when you talk about immigrant groups, achievement, you know, especially academic achievement, et cetera. Um, you know, people say, Asians, the new Jews, question mark? <laughs> Explanation point, right? And uh, <laughs> the, uh, the fact is, I mean, there is obviously a lot of overlap. There's high expectations, there's parental, you know, intergenerational uh, closeness and tension at the same time, and yet the outcomes have in many ways been different. I mean, you actually look at the Jewish American community and the Asian American community, and a, a lot of the, uh, the places where Jewish American success has emerged, for instance, are not places where Asian Americans succeeded. You know, places like entertainment, places like, uh, in some cases, politics, et cetera, et cetera, literature, arts. Uh, is it because of a, a different emphasis in terms of uh, on, on, from the cultural perspective towards encouraging people to pursue those things or something else? I think it's a different emphasis in the culture, sure. And, you know, I mean, the difference between the Asian and the Jewish culture, and I don't want to get too wrapped up in these broad generalizations, is that, you know, the Jewish culture is a culture of dissensus, right? Whereas the Asian culture tends to be a culture of consensus. And being able to, like, be sort of, like, competent within a culture of dissensus is, uh, is very useful for a, a large, uh, sprawling, multicultural country like America. And uh, if, if there is like sort of a prescription that I have that it's something that uh, Asians should think about and learn, is, uh, is uh, how to operate within a culture of dissensus. And, uh, and so, uh, so if you're thinking about, well, like, what should I do for my kids? Look, your kids should get good grades, you know, but your kids should also take the bait. And, and learn that like uh, that like a clash of ideas and interests is is how we operate in, in America. And uh, I don't think there's any. I think that's just a, a good and necessary thing. I don't think I have to encourage my kids to disagree with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if all the things that you three are talking about apply to both genders equally. Are you guys speaking for Asian American men? So the question is, why is did you remind a woman? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think it's, it's a good one. It's one actually that I think was brought up in the context, especially of the article that, that uh, Wesley uh, you wrote, uh, which relied heavily on uh, quotes from and uh, ideas that were related to a, a very gender perspective, a very male perspective. Um, all the the people who were in the cover, including yourself, were male. You know, a lot of the interviewees were male, uh, and there was actually a specific section in which you went into a uh, a, a class that you know, sort of taught Asian men how to pick up women, how to sort of get over them, their, their, you know, their meekness and mildness and just sort of swag it up, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so there, is there a, a sense in which a lot of things we're talking about here are really focused specifically on, on the perspective of Asian males, or? It, it's always been the case that dominant racial groups will direct more of their animus at the men than the women of a minority because the women of a minority group can be taken as sexual partners or they can be perceived, uh, treated paternalistically. Uh, this is, um, 
This is uh, generally true, right? And it's, it's the males of another, uh, of a subordinate racial group who represent some kind of threat that has to be diffused. Uh, so this is, you know, this is... That's hard for I know, it's like, it's like evolutionary biology. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think, I think though there is a sense in which, uh, by, by taking that perspective, it is sort of ignoring the, the very real sense that A, you know, it's, it's not it's so clear cut, obviously, that, that Asian American females have it so great. I mean, far from it, right? Uh, but beyond that, I mean, a lot of the issues we're talking about are values based issues. So those shouldn't actually relate solely to, you know, sexual rivalry or something like that, right? But women have, women have Asian women have a, a, another whole other set of issues that are related to being Asian women. Uh, and I interviewed a lot of Asian women, and yet somehow I interviewed like, maybe four times as many people as actually made it into the article, and uh, at least half of them were women. And uh, I, I wasn't, there was a woman in the article, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sach Takayasu is a, is a woman. And uh, I don't think everybody knew that, actually, because I thought she was going to be a man when I met her, but, uh, <laughs> but in fact, she's a woman. Just like the name is kind of general or neutral. Uh, um, so, you know, the, the kind of gender adds a whole other set of dynamics to it that, uh, that I'm going to explore in my book. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, Gene, what do you think? Well, I, I, just from observing my friends and my students, it does seem like there's a lot of overlap in terms of uh, parental pressure and parental expectations. I don't know if Asian American parents are, you know, are harder on their sons than their daughters. It seems like the daughters are also expected to get, to get the good grades and expected to... Uh, no, I mean the sons are often spoiled in favors, right? So <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that. You know, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes. But, uh, but at least, at least with my students and among my friends, it seems like you know the, the the dad wants the daughter to be a doctor just as much as he wants the son to be a doctor. And in some cases, the daughter is a better bet. <laughs> in my family, for instance, I have a younger sister who is a doctor. <laughs> Not, uh, but. Uh, but I, I think I think that you know there is uh, a, a long history of kind of this conversation around where gender and race intersect, and, and it's complicated and problematic. I think when we we paint with a broad stroke and ignore the fact that you know number one we're generalizing often from a personal position, especially as three of us here all being guys. Uh, but also you know I mean I, I do think that uh, there are, are relevant things to to consider regarding what it means to be you know an Asian American woman in it, you know, especially in the context that we're talking about, things like corporate America, you know, where you actually have sort of a dual layer of uh, sort of misperceptions and, and, you know, stereotypes that you have to confront as, as a woman and as somebody of, a, as what you mentioned, a subordinate race. Uh, Asian American men uh, start off uh, with a higher income than their, uh, than their white American counterparts, uh, but they dip below them over time. Uh, Asian American women start off making more money than their white female counterparts and continue to make more, more money than their wow. white female counterparts over time. So it's an, it's an interesting, you know, I don't have a pat answer for why that is, but that's an interesting finding. That's interesting. Huh? All right, well, uh, let's take another question. Um, I guess last week there was a panel um, on the flying tigers. It was interesting how they um, were trying to encourage more practical things because even if they went to the best schools, they still just had menial jobs. So how much of this, I guess, practicalness has to do with the history of, I guess, Asians in this country? Because it's, there's some historic things about being practical, otherwise you're not going to feed your children. So this is in some ways kind of an extension of this notion that this, this may be not a result of kind of inherent cultural values, but, but rather the reality of the experience in this country of coming here, not having a lot, you know, having to work very hard, and then again sacrificing for your kids, thereby creating a, a set of, you know, expectations. I mean, hey, I'm working my butt off, you can get a good school. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay for you to go to whatever, et cetera, right? Uh, so what, what do you guys think? I mean, and it's true. I mean, obviously, that brings up a class issue, and that's something which I think uh, came up even in the conversation around paper tigers as well. How much of what we think about as being Asian American identity, Asian American experience, is really tethered to this notion of the sort of suburban, middle class, you know, Asian among, you know, largely white minority kind of situation. 
and how much of it reflects uh, what what is going on among kids who don't have those privileges, who aren't going to ever go to Ivy League schools, no matter how, you know how hard their, their parents pressure them, etc. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, I think more than fifty percent of Asian American college students are attending community colleges, so it's a different discussion about a different group of people. Uh, you know, I was writing, and uh, the readership of New York Magazine was interested in the model minority Asians, and uh, and that's a specific group of people that has a specific demographic profile. You know, mostly immigrants from Taiwan and Hong Kong who came here after the 1980s with H1B visas, and they they they, they had a certain kind of experience and helped to to cement certain perceptions uh, that have nothing to do with Asia as a whole, but have to do with a specific group. And, uh, and uh, sure, a lot of people get shortchanged in the process because, you know, so China, like um, New York City is kind of half and half, I think, the Chinese community divided between sort of the amplified Asians and then, and then the, the denizens of Chinatown, right, who, who, are, who are engaged in various menial labors and who are beset by the various pathologies of the inner city, right? Um, and, uh, uh, you know, many of whom are, are, are illegal uh, and, you know, are living uncomfortable circumstances, and that's just as real in, in Asian American experience as any other. Uh, so there's a semantic problem that comes when you use a term like Asian America to refer to a gigantic continental landmass, right, that includes cultures that are dissimilar from one another as any others, right? So, uh, you know, Europe is a country that contains uh, both uh, Great Britain, Germany, and uh, Albania, right? So like the experiences of first generation Albanian immigrants are probably gonna be different than that of other groups that we think of as European American, right? That's a semantic problem that's just built into the language. Uh, uh, sure, so Asian America has lots of diversity across class, uh, geography, gender, many languages, um, many nationalities, different immigration histories. Uh, but I think most of the people here in this room uh, uh, have, you know, no, uh, are here because they, they, they know what Gene is talking about and, and what you're talking about when we're talking about the doctor, lawyer, engineer thing. And that's what I was talking about. But don't you think even despite all of the, the various um, social differences